up in a little bit. She'll tell me when. Oh, I think we are live. Okay, I couldn't tell, but I think we are live. So hi guys. Hello, hi, hello, hello. hello. Uh, greetings, everyone, and thank you again for joining another one of our recast LinkedIn Live sessions. Um, I'm going to start this conversation with a story because it was transformative to me in my career, and it's a lesson for all of us that I'd like to share. I can't see like a show of hands, but if I did a show of hands and said, how many of you were convinced that this next job that you want um, the next boss that you want, this piece of business that you want to win, but this thing was going to be the best thing that could ever happen to you in your entire life professionally. And raise your hand if it didn't happen and you were crushed and you were devastated. And um, that's what happened to me with Lisa and Leslie, that I was with another, another agency, another firm, and I pitched them on business that I had in my hand and blew it. And, but what happened was I had ended up having two really great friends uh, and we ended up having this absolutely wonderful relationship. And um, so it's such an honor for me, but also an emotional honor for me to be able to showcase my two colleagues, my two friends, uh, Leslie Westine and Lisa Powers. Leslie is the um, remarkable, dynamic, smart, funny, kind, kind, kind CEO, uh, of the Personal Care Products Council. And Lisa Powers is the Executive Vice President for Public Affairs and Communications. And um, these two women do some amazing work um, every day that is an example of how you can come to work, represent your clients well, have fun doing it and make a difference. So Lisa and Leslie, welcome. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Can I just say uh, back, back on your story, you did not blow it. What happened was you came in, you sold us, you did a phenomenal job. Lisa and I walked out of that pitch and we're like, Lisa Ross is it. She is fantastic. She's brilliant. She's exactly what we need. Big piece of business just to kind of supposedly close the deal. You, the agency brought in some other people and you know what? We wanted Lisa and you were spot on and, and we didn't go with you and it crushed us. Now, fortunately, we've maintained a beautiful, great, great relationship and we brought all of our business back to you. Um, but anyway, I had my hand up there, but I think we all did. So anyway, we're, we're so thrilled and a belated congratulations for being um, the US CEO of Edelman. We're thrilled. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled not only to be here right now, but have had shared many, many, many years and many projects and many more to come. So thank you. Thank I just you. had to clarify that. You no, I, I'm glad you did, because I think for all of us, we second guess ourselves and we make the wrong call. And yeah. that's what I did. And it was a lesson that I learned and I've taken it into, you know, my future career. And um, so for everybody listening, go with your gut. Do what you know is right and go with your exactly. gut. Um, and then maybe you still will have two great friends. So we're going to talk about um, the Edelman Trust Barometer and the role of business. So more on this later, but the 2022 Trust Barometer is out there. It is, um, it's, it's, it's discouraging. It's, uh, it's, it's dark. Uh, it is, but from that, I think always some greatness can come out of it. And so Lisa and Leslie, I'm really happy to have you all talk with our group about this. So first, you all are like some of the most avid followers of the Trust Barometer. I mean, even before I knew you, you were talking about the Trust Barometer and you have ever since. So first, give me your reaction um, to it. Were you, um, did anything surprise you um, when you looked at the data? So let me start and then we're going to go to the real expert, Lisa Powers here, and, and she can um, 
can give you a really a, also a hopefully a thoughtful response. Um, I can't say that I was surprised. I actually took it maybe, you know, I try to be a glasses half full to kind of person. So I was actually thrilled to see the higher numbers for the business community. Mm -hmm. um, the business community is standing up. Um, they're trying to be a solution uh, to the problems. Um, they've been establishing a lot of these ESG programs. They're engaging. They know that this is what their consumers want. They know this is what their employees want, which is engagement in some of these you know, larger societal issues like sustainability or you know, DE&I. So I was actually thrilled to see that. Um, and, um, and as I know, we may get into in, in the future, I do still think there's a great opportunity uh, for partnering with the business community, with government, with NGOs. So I was thrilled. And the only other thing before I pass it off to Lisa that I actually thought was interesting was the response on, um, I think it was 60% or so of workers want to work at a place where where the companies share their values yes. and their beliefs. And that was, that was helpful for me because I think it's all a great big aha moment and note to file as we move forward and we see the flexibility, which is a key issue to a lot of millennials, a lot of the next generation, will continue to be very, very important. At least I know it is in our world, mm -hmm. um, and I think in, in broader as well. But anyway, I pass it off to the brilliant Lisa Powers. <laughs> Not so brilliant, but thank you. Um, Lisa, you're right. We follow the trust barometer um, very closely. I'm a bit of a geek, as you know, about the barometer um, because I love the data and um, our strategies around communications and stakeholder engagement are always um, guided by what we learn from the trust barometer. So thank you um, to you and your team for that. I think, um, you know, I think we, when we talk about trust, we have to talk about transparency, right? Mm -hmm. That really is, they go hand in hand. And I would say that transparency, especially for the beauty and personal care industry that we represent is really the bedrock for us, mm -hmm. right? So trust and transparency go hand in hand and certainly learning what consumers want, what employees want, what our communities want is all of our stakeholders really. Um, I think that really, it guides the work that we do. I mean, it has to, right? These are products and I say this a lot, Lily's well, probably tired of hearing me say this, but they're, they are personal. We yes. touch, our companies touch consumers multiple times throughout the day. So I think when you have that kind of relationship and you, and certainly working in the industry that we work in, which is very innovative, uh, it is very scientifically sophisticated. Uh, everything we do is grounded in the best available science. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised to learn that scientists are, seen as credible sources yes. um, for information. And I think the pandemic in particular has underscored uh, what our industry has always known, which is that science matters, yes. you know, and, it, yes. and it, 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 it affects every aspect of our lives. Yes. Um, and our, and I think to, to build on that, that our member companies take respon their responsibility for product safety and for the science behind those products or the, the science of beauty, as we call it, they take that trust that families put in those products um, very seriously. Yes. So we were happy to hear see that. I love how you leaned into the personal part of personal care because I, I honestly can't think of another industry that every single one of us at some point and generally throughout the day touch the products that you produce. And the need for trust and belief in the integrity of leadership um, and of the products that we are using. So, and, and you talked, Leslie, also about, and this was a highlight for me, I, I will acknowledge that it wasn't that dark, um, but uh, this was a highlight for me and a responsibility for me that, and for you, that people that work in our organizations look to us to lead. They look to us to have a point of view and they will choose to come to PCPC they will choose to come to Edelman or they will leave if they do not feel um, that we are representing. Now, one of the things that business that did outperform the other uh, entities, outperformed government, outperformed media, outperformed NGOs, but one of the issues was that business is expected to speak out on societal issues. Now, there's a definition of societal issues and for the first time, thank God, we verified speaking out on societal issues versus telling somebody who to vote for. 
Nobody wants to be told who to vote for. Policy and politics are different. And our research was very clear about this, but I've always been curious and envious is not the right word, but in awe and impressed with you all's ability because of your reach and because of the diversity of your companies and the diversity of the people in your companies, how you have been able to stand up and to talk about societal issues without fear and without alienating others. So how are you doing that? Because you're doing it well. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I mean, it, it does come back to your the issue of trust, right? Mm -hmm. So over the years, our members know we're going to speak the truth. We're going to be transparent. We're going to tell you the positive. We're going to tell you the negative, uh, which is all part of how you build you know, trust. Uh, and and then mm -hmm. compromise is not you know a, a bad word. We need to listen to each other and really hear each other. Why do people feel a certain way? And mm -hmm. the great news at the end of the day, don't we all want to leave the world a little better for our children and our grandchildren, right? So I mean, I think that you know we do have, and I you know I'd like to think it's it's our leadership that's built this trust. It's our industry, it's our organization, mm -hmm. and, and it's the the leaders within our industry that really have built a, a great relationship in, in collaboration and in conversation with each other. And because of that, they're really listening. And I think we all have at the end goal to protect people, to protect the planet. We know it's our responsibility. Yes. And so thank you for saying that. Uh, but the, everyone doesn't always 100% agree, right? with what we do. But for example, last year, one of the things I'm really thrilled, we decided as an industry, we're going to give uh, the day off for everyone to vote or, you know, participate in the election. We yes. didn't, your point, we didn't tell anyone who to vote for. We didn't even try to spin it with saying, you know, in any way, we don't care. But civic engagement last year always yes. was something important to us as an organization and to the industry. So thank you. Lisa. Yeah, if I could just build on that, Lisa, uh, what Leslie said, I, I think too, more brands today are putting a stake in the ground, right? Around what they value. And so, and I think the, the events over the last two years have sparked some much needed conversation and, mm -hmm. and self-reflection, um, certainly in addressing, you know, the challenges that I think that we're all facing um, I remember when we reached out to Edelman, and I think I can say this, uh, back in 2020, because we wanted to take a critical look at ourselves and we wanted to figure out how as an industry and as a trade association that represents that industry, an industry that was a, a little ahead of, of the trade association, right? We have 600 member companies. Everybody's in a different place in their journey. We certainly, PCPC, was, we were new to the journey. But I reached out to you and I said, I really, how do we do this? Um, because we need to get our house in order. And you're talking about what, after the murder of George. Yes. Yeah. And you remember what you said to me. Well, girl, <laughs> if you wait until you get your house in order, you're going to be waiting a long time. Yeah. And so, but I think I'm really proud of the work that the trade association has done um, in partnership with our members to take a critical look at, at DEI. We now have, because of the work we did with Edelman and those you know, those hard internal conversations that we had with each other. We have um, an internal task force that's led by our employees at various um, various places when the, within the organization. It's a diverse group. We also have a uh, an advisory group that is uh, members of our board of directors, as well as top DEI experts within our companies. Um, and we're all critically looking at what can our industry do to make a more inclusive, and I have to put in beautiful world. Yes. And by beautiful, I mean, you know, that we all treat each other with respect and we understand that the world looks very different, right? Yes. And, and we, have to, we have to embrace those differences. You all, during that journey with us and my, my great colleague, Ashley Minifield, who worked with us um, on this, but it was such a critical moment because again, you are, symptomatic you're emblematic of the world writ large you're not here and you're not here you can't see my hands you're not all to the left you're not all to the right your representation is far more of like who most of us are like try and you were so honest about the journey that you're on and leslie and you and lisa saying i know this but i know that i don't know that and i want to learn and you wanted to bring people in and you 
it was just, it was actually a really beautiful process. It was a really beautiful process. And it's something that, um, that I'm proud of to have been your partner on it. But you may recall also, we said a year from now, we'll separate the, the, the women from the mice, right? Who's still doing the work? Who's still talking about it? Who's still driving this agenda? Because some talked about it because they had to and they felt pressure, but others continued to talk about it and more importantly, continued to take action, which is exactly what you all did. And I think in a, in a tough environment. So um, it, was, um, it, was, it was an honor. Quite frankly, well, to be able well to do it. I tell you, you you set us off on this, you know, the journey. I mean, we had this excellent conversation with our board um, of directors, and now, you know, from that, we're very serious. We are in the middle of. We've got our strategic framework. We have our short-term plan, including you know, getting our ha own house in order, looking at our suppliers, our membership, yes. our, looking at mentorships and at, at, at awards, and and then we have our medium-term medium-term focus, which is more on, on policies, on legislation, on the Crown Act, and then longer term. And we're going to come back to you, you know, I'm sure in six months or so to work with us on some of these longer terms. So we are committed. We've got the strategic framework. We've got, you know, the objectives. We've got our KPIs. I mean, we're, you know, we're ready. And 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 it's a real honor to work with you on this. Um, so so thank you. We're, we're on the journey and it's 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 very, very important, impactful and rewarding. Well, as we continue the um, love fest uh, here, uh, I do want to. I want to. I want to talk about something that happened in the green room, which is very often the best part of the conversation. Is is the pre conversation? And Leslie, you reminded me of your um, history of being in government and being in business. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about a path forward, and we talk about like what's next, um, while business distanced itself particularly from government and from media uh, that faced remarkable declining trust. Um, for PCPC, there's a lot of state, federal, global advocacy work involved in advancing the number of issues that you and your companies are looking at. And so from your point of view, what does trust look like and what is the path forward? And Leslie, this is obviously a leading question because you had this beautiful conversation about partnership that business and government have to come together. All of us have to come together to chart a path forward. And because when I did see those results, it did break my heart. I mean, I had the, the privilege of working in the White House many years ago. I got the privilege of working in the California governor's office. And I've seen where partnerships with government, with NGOs, with business can be very impactful and can, can really move an issue everyone has a role, right? I mean, in that situation, you know, business can be nimble, innovative, act fast. Hopefully when government works, they can take things to scale and or set standards. I mean, there is a role for everyone. Um, and when you advocate together, when you partner together and collaborate, talk about the trust level. When we go into, you know, up on the hill here or whichever authority and even around the world, we are trying always to make sure we are bringing partners and we are collaborating. We've just done that. I'm over the moon thrilled with the U.S. Humane Society for mm. eliminating animal testing on cosmetics. I mean, I'm so the you know thing I'm most most proud of in last year was they gave us their Corporate Progress Award. I saw that. At the Henry Spear Progress Award, and you know, one of our board members said, "I never thought, you know, that we would necessarily see the U.S. Humane Society giving that to us." We've also worked in the states with Cruelty Free International. Yeah. Um, we've we've advanced some ingredients and, and working with Environmental Working Group in California in the states, and and we've been impactful and effective because of these partnerships. And so that's why I am totally committed to trying to you know rise all boats, bring everyone together. Uh, because it makes such a difference, especially in this partisan gridlock. Um, yes. We can be bipartisan when we can bring in the NGOs. Um, it's really exciting. And that is the path forward, um, in my opinion. Lisa, I want to go back to you about a question specific to media. But but Leslie and, and, and Lisa, but I think Leslie on this one, for those of us who, for those who are listening, Part of what you've been able to do beautifully is you're fearless in walking into some of those rooms because many people would be afraid. They're like, the Humane Society is never going to work with us. Mm -hmm. they're, they're never going to have a conversation with us. And what we all know is that unless you ask, 
you don't know unless you, you know, unless you, what is it? Unless you play, you can never win, right? And yeah. so from a leadership perspective, how did you and Lisa and your team say, you know what? It might be tough, but if I'm going to be brave and I'm going to be bold and I'm going to go and I'm going to talk to them and see if they will work with us. How did you, you do know that? What? And it was literally a phone call to Sarah, the head of HSUS Legislative Fund, who is a magnificent, brilliant, sharp, sharp woman who's been there for many, many years, very, very committed to these issues. And it was literally calling her up and saying, can we have a conversation? I think there's a path forward here. And she was fantastic we partner we we went over south there and of course we all don't agree you know on everything on every component but we have built such a trust uh that we know we we can go you know together and even go up on the hill in, in the same meeting and know that we can disagree even in front of you know the regulators and and that's fine um but again having that trust and transparency and sharing in a genuine way and the more you do it and the longer you do it the more trust there will be and many many of our companies um have taken the lead in this area with the humane society and uh and with other organizations so so we have learned a lot also from our companies um in doing it but it's as simple as uh, picking up the phone and saying, I think there's some common ground here. Mm. Sit down and talk. It's shocking to me how very few real genuine conversations yes. um, are taking place these days and really how exciting and what a potential there is when you just sit down and have those conversations. Yeah. Well, yeah. and I think, I think, trust. I think we all also, if I can, um, you know, we all realize we can't do it alone. That means yeah. NGOs too. Everybody, I think we're at a, you know, I, you talk about it dark, Lisa. I feel some days that we're, our country is in a very dark place. And then I'll see one or something, one or two stories and I'll say, see, we all, we realize that we've got to do it together. Yes. And NGOs, you know, there years ago, I think business and NGOs partnering, you know, wasn't really, you didn't see that a whole lot. I think you're seeing a, a lot more now. Yes, I agree. There's um, one of the things I told you both that I love about our show is um, the feedback we get that people say, oh, I walked away with something tangible. I now either have the courage to do something I couldn't do before, or I understand how to do something I couldn't do before. Leslie, you and I have agreed that Lisa Powers is one of the best comms people the uh, best. that we, we've ever worked with. And so Lisa, hard question for you, given the really uh, low marks that media got in terms of trust, but we know that media is a part of our world. How do you advise your uh, the member companies? How do you advise the member companies to engage with media when the trust is so low? And how do you, on behalf of the council, engage with media, given these, these this, the perception or reality of a lack of trust? Yeah, I mean, it is very disturbing to to see those numbers about the trust in media, especially since from where I sit, that's the conduit, right? To the consumer, right. to whoever the audience is. Um, you know, what we have done over the years is we've tried to be transparent and authentic in the way we communicate. We have used social media, although, you know, I saw the numbers from this year's trust barometer that social media is, you know, the their, their trust numbers are really low. And fake news is at an all time high. I think it was like 76%. Yeah. Yeah. So we are constantly struggling with how do we break through the noise because there's a lot of misinformation out there about our products, about our companies, about the safety of those products. Mm -hmm. And so, but we, we just keep pushing forward. We try to break through that noise whenever possible. We also try to distill scientific information down, which is not easy, <laughs> but right. um, we try to distill it down so the average consumer can understand that. Um, we try to make uh, real life comparisons. So, you know, I, I hear all the time that this is natural or that's natural. And then my response to a reporter is, well, poison ivy is natural, right? You don't want that yeah. stuff anywhere near you. <laughs> so I think that, um, you know, it's a constant struggle, but we continue and we want to meet consumers where they are, which is online. That's predominantly where they're getting their, their information. Can I make just a quick plug for cosmeticsinfo.org? Please, please. Our science and safety website. Um, it is uh, It was a labor of love and multidisciplinary approach to looking at ingredients and the safety and the science behind them. And so we are always pointing media to, um, to that website. 
the other thing I think from where we sit, my team is very respectful of the media, respectful mm -hmm. of the process. Mm -hmm. I have met so many communications professionals in, at my level and, and in other levels within the discipline that don't respect the process, mm. you know, or they view media as the, as, as bad, the big bad wolf. And I don't view it that way. Mm. I view it as they have a job to do. We have a job to do. Let's figure out where we can come together and help educate the public. So I love that. And I love the plug too, because, um, into our listeners, um, additional uh, recast, I'll talk very specifically about the findings of the report, but one of them very specifically as it uh, relates to media was a, was a belief that media purposely does not tell the truth. And when, and then who ranked the highest in terms of, um, I trust this media was internal media. It was the, it was the, um, uh, it was the dot gov, the dot com within an organization. And so, and, and the last question, well, my last question to both of you, but I have one before that, but my last question is going to be, what is the thing that you are most proud of that you have done at PCPC? But before that, I also want to talk with you all as employers. You know, we're all talking about, you know, the great resignation, which some people see as the great opportunity. And you have a lot of people that work with you and you have the really, you know, I met with them and they were happy, fulfilled, engaged, active workforce. What are the things that you all are doing to ensure that your colleagues, the people that you work with and who work for you and that you work for feel comfortable and safe in their environments? So let me start. That was a great, great loaded question. So I'm going to try and, and pull out two pieces of it. Um, first of all, let, well, first of all, let me take, I don't want to say the easier one because they're both great, great questions. But one of the things that I haven't mentioned that I'm really, really proud of, in addition to these partnerships that we are doing, you have such thoughtful listeners that I do have a piece of advice and I'm going to mm -hmm credit for someone else, Francine, in our shops, her work. We have created an international association collaboration of about 20 countries. And there, talk about trust. We have regulators, we have industry. It is a very uh, dynamic, real working group where we are making a difference on these issues globally. And mm -hmm. when I here, I didn't really see, and I, I still haven't seen other industries doing this. Mm -hmm. uh, but really, I think it's it's been very very impactful for the industry. So all of the um, all of the the collaborations and the partnerships, I'm over the moon thrilled with, and we we have done so much. We haven't even touched out on all the work we've done in sustainability and our legislative work. I mean, I could go on and on, um, uh, but but that's something before I leave that. Before I leave this conversation here, I want to make sure that everyone sees. And then I have to say, I'm over the moon that you mentioned culture. And that is the most important thing to me. Uh, I feel, I listen, I walk around, I feel that I've got the best understanding that I possibly can um, with, that, with knowing none of us can know what it's like in someone else's shoes. But I try really, really to hear and, and just to give respect, to set very, very high goals for everyone and then give a lot of flexibility, right? I'm certainly not a micromanager, but if you trust, and you have faith in your wonderful employees, which I certainly do, you give them total flexibility. I don't care if someone gets the job done at 3 a.m. or 3 p.m., but we're gonna set high goals. And and as long as you reach those you know, great results, you have total flexibility and respect from me and from us. So yeah. that's, that yes. our culture is really, really important to us. Beautiful. Sorry, I took all your time, but you can still go now, Lisa, sorry. No, I would, I just echo all of that, Leslie. I mean, I have a fabulous team and I don't ask them to do anything that I wouldn't do. Um, and we're, we're all for one and one for all. And, um, and I think that's important when you're, when you're overseeing and working closely with the staff, they've got to, tr again, it comes all trust. to trust, right? They have to trust you. Trust and transparency. All right. Yep. I, um, as usual, I wish we had another 15 minutes because I have uh, like at least eight more questions. Well, invite us back, Lisa. Invite I will invite you back. I will invite you back. Um, you guys, what you do and how you do it is um, impressive and it's powerful and it's inspiring. And um, 
I'm proud to be your partner and I can't wait to see all of the great things that you all are going to do next. So thank, thank you very you. much. Thank for you for this opportunity. You're the best. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you Bye. to the listeners. Appreciate you. Bye guys.